In this video, we're going to go through a short Python script that does a very typical data analysis task. The Python script is here. We've got about 20 lines of Python code, and we are going to start with a data set that looks like this. It's the English Premier League match results so far in the season, and we're going to end up with the Premier League table, the summer results. To do that, we're going to have to split stat data. We're going to have to add columns, group by, and sort by all the typical data operations. So let's get started. If you would like to follow along, a link to the materials is in the comments below. If you click on the link, you'll come to this OneDrive in the browser. If you click on the Rosetta folder, then you will see the two files that you want is this Python file here and the original data file there. We've also got other files here because we've also implemented this task in uh, Power BI, in SQL, and in R. Let's take a look at our original data set. It's a CSV file, though I've opened it in Excel. It has a row for every match played in the English Premier League so far this season. So for example, with the first uh, match was played at 12.30 on 12th of September, Fulham played Arsenal at home at the Fulham ground, and in the end, it was 3-0 to Arsenal. In fact, the only columns that we're actually going to need, though there's lots of interesting columns here, is these four columns, the two teams that played and the uh, full-time goals, both home and away. Now let's have a look at the result that we want to achieve. Here's the league table. Each team has got a row. What we've got is the number of games each team has played and the number that they've won, drawn and lost. GF stands for goals for, the number of goals scored by the team, and GA, goals against, the number scored against them. GD, goal difference, is simply the difference between goals for and the goals against. Teams get three points for a win, one for a draw, and none for a loss. So here we go, Manchester City has played 23 times 3, 69, plus 5 is 74 points. The position of each team is based on points, obviously high to low, and if there is a tie between the points, then the goal difference. So Arsenal is above Leeds because it's got a higher goal difference. Now let's run this Python script line by line, looking at the results as we do so. I'm using a Python edit called VS Code. Other editors are available. Spider is a popular one. Google Colab is another. In the summer, we're going to do a series on Python. So we'll talk about all about Python setup then. What's interesting here is the code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these first three lines. The first two lines import two very famous Python packages, pandas for data analysis and numpy numerical Python to support pandas. The third line uses a pandas function, read CSV, to create a Python data frame, a table called dfmatch. If we were to look at that here, we can see it looks exactly like the data from the spreadsheet. Each match is going to generate two results, one from the perspective of the home team, one for the away team. What we're going to do is look at the home team first. From the home team's perspective, the three columns that we need is the home team itself, uh, the full-time home goals, which are the goals for, the goals scored by the home team, and the away goals. So let's just uh, create that list, and the next column basically creates a new table called DF Home, and that has got those three columns in there. And there they are. We'd actually like to rename the columns in this list so that home team becomes team, full-time home goals becomes GF goals for, and full-time away goals becomes GA goals against. So let's go back to our script. What we've got here is a tuple with uh, those called the result column list. And what I'm going to say here is that the columns of our new table are going to be renamed to that resultant column list. And so if we look at our home data again and we refresh it, we can see we've got these new names here. Now we're going to repeat exactly the same thing, but from the point of the away team. In that case, what we need is the away team column. And this time the full-time away goals are going to be the goals for, and the full-time home goals are going to be the goals against. So I'm going to, just going to run that. And then we've got this new data frame DF away. I'll just have a look at that down here and we can see it's exactly the same column names, 
but this is from the away team point of view. Now we have these two data sets, home and away. Here they are. They've both got the same number of columns, in fact the same column names. So what we want to do is to stack them one on top of the other. And we're going to do that with this uh, append method here. And that will give us something called DFall. If we want to have a look at that, we'll see basically it's got twice the number of rows, 616 rows, and it's got two rows for each match. The next thing to do is to add new columns to this data frame. I'm going to add columns for one, drawn, and lost. I'm going to use the NumPy method where, and I'm going to say create a new column called one. That's going to be equal to one, where the number of goals for is greater than the goals against, otherwise it's going to be zero. Similar logic for the new drawn and the new lost column for the drawn, when goals for equals goals against, and a team loses when the goals for are less than the goals against. Let's select and then run those columns and let's have a look at our in our data viewer let's refresh and we can see these three new columns there and here we've got Fulham our first one three goals against no goals for so it didn't win it didn't draw it lost now we've got all the granular data at a match level to summarize into our league table and to do that we're going to create a new data frame called league and basically we're going to take our all data frame and we're going to group by team. So every row has a team and then we're going to sum the other columns. And when we do that, that creates a DF league. Let's have a look at it in the viewer. And we can see the basis of our league table. There's a few final things that we've got to do. We've got to add the played column, the points column, the goal difference column. We've got to order it in terms of points and we've got to order the columns in the expected order. But before that, we've got one slightly technical thing to do. If we look at our data set, our lead data set here, we'll see that it's got this index. It's made the team as an index. Have a look at this. It's more obvious. That's the index. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say reset the index so that even though we've grouped by team, it looks a bit more like a normal column. Now it's got a, an index here. There we go. We can see now it's a, the team is a proper column. Now let's add three columns, played, points, and GD, goal difference, based on the highlighted code here. The played is simply the count of the one, the draw, and the lost. Since these values are one, if it's one, zero, otherwise, we can simply sum up the one, drawn, and lost columns to get the played. The points team gets three points for a one, uh, one point for a draw, and zero points for a loss. So that's the calculation there. And finally, the goal difference is very simply the difference between the goal for and the goal against. And let's look at our league table. Once I refresh it, we can see the played, the points, and the goal difference columns there. Now the rows are at the moment in alphabetical order. Good news if you're an Arsenal fan, otherwise perhaps not. What we need to do is order our rows in order of points, highest to lowest, and if there's a tie in the points, by goal difference, highest to lowest. The way that we do that, if we come to our code here, we're going to sort the values, again, by points and goal difference, ascending equals false means high to low. So we'll just run that and we will look at our league table and refresh it and that's looking a lot better we can see Manchester City at the top and if we have a look at Arsenal and Leeds they're both from 45 points but Arsenal is higher up because it's got a higher goal difference now that we've got our league data frame in the order that we want it we can add a new column called position which is basically one for the top team 20 for the bottom team and we do it with this highlighted state of there. Let's just decompose it into its uh, bits first of all. We'll have a look at this first of all. I'll just highlight len df league, and that gives us the length of the data frame. It's 20 rows. Arrange is a numpy method which will give us a sequence starting at zero of uh, 20 values because that's the length of df league. There we go, not 19. In fact, we actually want 1 to 20 rather than not 19 so I'm just going to add one to that and that's there's the array and finally I'm going to assign that to a new column called position and if I have a look in my data viewer 
I will see that position column there, 1 through 20. So we've got our data set, but our columns are in a bit of a strange order, not the order that we'd expect to see if we looked at a, a league table. In fact, the usual order is in this column list here, starting with position, ending in points. So what I'm going to do is define that list, and then I'm going to say that my league table, and if we refresh it, now we can see we've got all the columns in the order expected. Finally, let's export our league data frame to an Excel file using this to Excel method. And I've just opened it up in Excel, the output of file, and here we can see our league table. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's the first video that we've done on our channel about Python and we intend to do many more Python videos over the next few months. If you're interested in how we solve this league table problem in other languages, there's a, a playlist called SQL R, DAX and M and it shows how we did it in those languages and we're also going to add Excel to that as well. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in another video again soon.